five to six ways by which you can exercise dominion over death. Number one, your understanding. Dominion means you rule over. It means you are no longer subject to that limitation. It means you are able to defy that reality. It means that your life is a reality that is bigger than the reality of death. How do you exercise it? Number one, your understanding, which is what I've been telling you all through. If you have this kind of understanding that you are receiving now, you have exercised dominion over death. Number two, holiness. Your abstinence from the life in the flesh, which is sin, and your being separated unto God, which is the Holy Spirit. Holiness. Holiness gives you dominion over death. Because when you, are, when you live holy, you are separated unto God. You are separated unto the Holy Spirit and He is the Spirit of life. Therefore, if sin can no longer reign in your mortal body at that state, death also has no power over you. Number three, obedience. Your dominion over death is activated through obedience when you are led by the Spirit. There are things the Holy Spirit will tell you to do that can avert death. In your family the holy spirit can tell you to stand up for seven nights and pray 12 to 1 and you don't know that the spirit of death has been released over your family and by the time you finish you discover that this one was sick that one was sick this one was sick but through it all nobody died by your obedience to the law of the spirit of life you have defied the dominion of death i pray that we'll be led by the spirit inside and outside i pray that at all times we'll be led by the spirit number four kingdom service that's another way by which you activate this dominion over death that the bible has explained to us <laughs> exodus 23 25 to 26 so you shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless your bread and your water and he shall take away all these sicknesses from the midst of you he said, none shall be barren among you. Right? No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. Miscarriage is a form of death. He said, I will fulfill the number of your days. In other words, you will not, you will not die until your, your days on earth is complete. All of this is tied to verse 25. He said, you shall serve the Lord your God. When you are under the service of the Lord God, you are under his lordship, under his dominion. Satan cannot come and snatch you by the cold hands of death. Service is what qualifies you a candidate of life. Service. What did, what did the king, what's that king, Hezekiah? 2 Kings chapter 20, in verse 3 and 5. When Isaiah told Hezekiah, God say you will die. So put your house in order. This sickness you will not recover. Hezekiah turned towards God. He said, remember how I have walked before you. Your service can become redemption in the day of death. Number five. Your giving. And your seed. Can activate your dominion over death. Your giving. Your seed. Is it true? I'll show you. Psalms 41 verse 1 to 3. The next time you see a poor person, you want to help them when you read this scripture. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Who doesn't like this blessing, I beg? Verse 3, the Lord will strengthen him on, the, on his bed of illness. That means he will recover. You will sustain him on his sick bed. Why? Because of his giving. Giving is a very powerful tool. Very powerful channel. I'm giving you secrets this night. Oh, so that the day that Satan strikes, you will not carry your phone and start looking for my number. Intelligence can tell you what to do. Are we ready to pray? Number six, the last but not the least, another channel that gives you, that activates your dominion over death. Your confession. 
your confession. When the doctors tell you you have kidney stones, what are you saying? When they tell you you have fibroid, you've been operated before, and now they are contemplating operation, and it is three, four years now, no issue. What do you say? Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. He said, I said before you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, but I advise that you choose life that you may live. Choose life that you may live. Now, who told you you would die with that sickness? Somebody say, I have ulcer. No, no. He say, I am asthmatic. Hey, don't say that. You are committing two sins. Number one, you are killing yourself by saying that. Number two, which is the greater sin, you are using the name of the Lord in vain. Because the Bible says you shall not use the name of God in vain. And Exodus 3.14 says, I am that I am. When you say I am asthmatic, you are using his name in vain. Because he's not asthmatic. When you say I am poor, you are using the name of the Lord in vain. Because he's not poor. When you say I am down, you are using the name of the Lord in vain. So what do you say? I am rich. That's why I say I am calm. I am come. He didn't say I have come. He said I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Tell your neighbor that you are going to be alive for a long time. It doesn't matter what the devil does. It doesn't matter the attacks that the enemy throws against you. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the righteous, and those that hate the righteous shall perish are you ready i want you to lift your voice and pray in the spirit for two minutes every devil of death that is around your life around your finance around your family some of you come from families where people die every day every year i mean to say Every four months, somebody dies in your office. It's time to shut the mouth of the grave. It's time to silence the mouth of death. <laughs> 